Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. We're gonna wrap up the story of Samson back in Judges chapter 16, verse 22. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. It's really interesting the way the Lord moves and the way the Lord works. Like, normally speaking, the Lord's not attached to, you know, like, I'm gonna bless you because, you know, you have brown eyes. I'm going to bless you because you have black hair. I'm going to bless you because you have long hair. I'm going to bless you because you have long nails. But because of the Nazarite vow that Samson was to be held to since the moment of his birth, the Lord's anointing didn't leave him until he broke all three of the Nazaritic vows. There were three, not just, um, it's not just the, uh, the long hair. If I remember correctly, and I'm doing this all the top of my head, forgive me if I get it wrong, Google's your friend. Um, it was, you don't touch anything unclean, you don't drink of anything alcoholic, and you never cut your hair. And the Nazarite vow could be however long or short you want it to be. He was to be a Nazarite from the moment he was born for his entire life. So, as long as he didn't, um... Now, he broke the unclean rule plenty of times. As far as the drunken rule... I have no idea. I want to guess, and this is only my opinion, but because he lived his life so incredibly for himself and since lust consumed him quite a bit, it's kind of like, I don't see, if he's willing to sleep with a harlot, I don't see why he wouldn't be willing to drink a little bit of wine. But maybe he didn't. Maybe he kept that one. But when his hair was shaven by the Philistines after Delilah found out about it, yeah, he lost his strength. So once his hair grew back, the Spirit of the Lord returned. It, again, it's just interesting how the Lord works. And it's really cool how the Lord works in us sometimes when we're really not living for Him at all. So the Philistines, uh, they're like, they've got him captive. He's a grinder in one of their prisons. They bring him out one day in the middle of a festival, and they're like, uh, go up to verse 23. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. And they said, our god has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy. So Samson, they call up Samson, he does some tricks for him. And then in the middle of the whole thing, verse 28, Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So the men that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. And his whole purpose and his prayer involved once again him. Lord, let me take vengeance on them for my two eyes. It just, his life never reflected a life devoted to the Lord. Even though he had the Nazarite vow, like he followed the motions of the Nazarite vow for the most part. Except for He's tell, except for, uh, as a judge, I can understand why he would have to get near unclean things. He would have to go and kill the Philistines. He would have to go and make war against them. I completely understand to get that. The drunkenness thing, maybe he did keep it. Maybe he didn't. I'm guessing not. I could be wrong. I'd like to be wrong. But just the way he lived his life overall, going into you know, non-Jewish into non-Jewish uh, women marrying them, marrying the enemy he was actually called to kill, and then his final blow against the Philistine, one of his primary motivating things was, Lord, let me take vengeance on them for my two eyes. It was a life lived for himself, and yet God used him to fulfill his calling for his life. It kind of makes me think, you know, can we escape God's calling if we're called? I know I've done some running away in my life, and yet here I am on YouTube preaching His Word. And I do still live for myself in some ways very, very badly. In fact, lust, honestly, is one of my strongholds. That's, I think most single men would probably agree with me that that's a problem. I'm definitely not alone in that. Um, but it is something that I'm sure can be conquered with the grace of the Lord. I just, it's like for, despite all the bad things that I see in my life, the way my thoughts could be better, the way, you know, I could probably live for the Lord more and do a little bit more for him. It's just like Samson really wasn't even trying, but the Lord used him anyway. 
It's like to some extent, you can't escape God's calling if he's called you. I don't know. It's one of those things where I just, the overall point I hear I see as Samson really was, as a, it, I can't imagine his judgment for, before the Lord was good. Like nothing he did was really for the Lord. He really just, he, he lived for himself. That's his entire biblical testimony. I hope, honestly, somewhere outside of the Bible that he really did live for the Lord. And that as he judged Israel for those 20 years, maybe for those 20 years, you know, he wasn't going into harlots or going into the Philistine women. Maybe those 20 years, he really, he hit it dead on. And the Bible's just highlighting, you know, this guy, this, he had some really horrible, rocky points. But the Lord chose not, if there were good points, the Lord chose not to highlight them for those 20 years that he judged Israel. I'm hoping that there were good, good points and good positive things. But overall, Samson's the story of a man who lived for himself and the Lord used him anyway for his glory and for his ultimate goal for the people of Israel. Stuff to think about, y'all. Love you guys very much. Thank you for watching, and God bless. And that was completely out of order. Sorry about that. <laughs>